What is that? It's a man! What, is he dead? No, sir! He's writing! Repeat! He's writing, sir! He's writing in a notebook! That man was not mad. He was working with shrapnel whistling round him because he couldn't wait. The contents of that notebook were too important to write it down later. He had to do it when his mind dictated. He couldn't put it off a single second. What was so important that he would risk his life for it? What was he writing that stopped him from standing up and running like any other man would have done? The Tractatus Logico-Philosophicus. The most influential philosophical work of the 20th century. That soldier was called Ludwig Wittgenstein, the man who set the limits on our thoughts. The enigma that he tried to decipher was the following. Can we know the truth? All the great thinkers throughout history have sought a single certainty. Something which no one can refute, like two and two make four. In order to find that truth, Wittgenstein used, in fact, mathematical logic. What better means of obtaining a certainty than an immutable language free from the passions of man? He advanced slowly, using equation after equation with impeccable method, until he reached a terrifying conclusion. There is no such truth outside of mathematics. There is no way of finding a single absolute truth, an irrefutable argument which might help answer the questions of mankind. Philosophy, therefore, is dead. Because whereof we cannot speak, thereof we must be silent. There is no way of finding a single absolute truth, an irrefutable argument that might help to answer the questions of mankind. Philosophy, therefore, is dead. Because whereof we cannot speak, thereof we must be silent. It seems that someone does wish to speak. It appears that you're not in agreement with Wittgenstein. That means either you have found a contradiction in the arguments of the Tractatus, or you have an absolute truth to share with us all. I believe in the number pi. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't understand you. Uh, what was it you said you believed in? In the number pi in the golden section, the Fibonacci series. The essence of nature is mathematical. There is a hidden meaning beneath reality. Things are organized following a model, a scheme, a logical series. Even the tiny snowflake includes a numerical basis in its structure. Therefore, if we manage to discover the secret meaning of numbers, we will know the secret meaning of reality. Translating his words into the Queen's English, <laughs> we find ourselves faced with a fresh, rousing defense of mathematics, as if numbers were pre-existing ideas in reality. Anyway, this is nothing new. Since man is incapable of reconciling mind and matter, he tends to confer some sort of entity on ideas, because he cannot bear the notion that the purely abstract only exists in our brain. The beauty and harmony of a snowflake. <laughs> How sweet. The butterfly that flutters his wings and causes a hurricane on the other side of the world. We've been hearing about that damn butterfly for decades, but who has been able to predict a single hurricane? No 
nobody. Tell me something. Where is the beauty and harmony in cancer? What makes a cell suddenly decide to turn itself into a killer metastasis and destroy the rest of the cells in a healthy body? Does anybody know? No. Because we'd rather think of snowflakes and butterflies. And of pain, war, all that book. Why? Because we need to think that life has meaning. That everything is governed by logic and not by mere chance. If I write two, then four, then six, then we feel good because we know that next comes eight. We can foresee it. We are not in the hands of destiny. Unfortunately, however, this has nothing to do with truth. Don't you agree? This is only fear. Sad. There you go.